Hello guys and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 100% procedural bone material that looks pretty realistic. Uh, you can see here I'm going to be demonstrating this with this uh, RAM skeleton. I'll show you exactly where you can get this free model on Sketchfab. But this sort of bone material here, um, I just think it came out looking really good. I've been looking at a lot of references and I just think that this is a pretty realistic procedural bone material. So we're going to be making it. I'm going to go step by step and I'll be showing you guys this uh, node setup here and how to make it all look kind of cool. So let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy. So if anybody is interested in using the exact same model I am using, I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. It's this uh, RAM head here. And uh, it's on Sketchfab, it's completely free, and I give full credit to the person here um, who made this asset. It's definitely not one that I made. I think it's actually a scan or something like that, but it's really good for testing this out. So go ahead and download that, and it's in, a, I think, an FBX. And all I did is I imported mine into Blender, like so, and I just put in a little um, plane here that I extruded up and I just added in some lights and I enabled cycles. So we're going to be working in cycles. That's the main thing here. Doesn't matter what object you're working with. Doesn't matter what scene. Just make sure that you're working in cycles. And um, I just went with about 90 samples on my render, but that's kind of irrelevant. Mainly just as long as you're in cycles. So with your object of choice selected, you're going to go into your shading workspace. Um, like I said, this is what I'm going with and I'm going to press Z and I'm going to go rendered, right? So you can see this is my little setup here. I'm just going to click on that skull. Now I've already added a uh, material that I just called skull. So I just clicked plus and then I just named it skull, but I haven't done anything. So this is just a default principal shader here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by giving this some texture. So my favorite way to do that is to click on the base color here, just drag it and let's type in noise. Oops, noise, and let's go to noise texture. Make sure not to get the white noise. You just want the noise texture here. And we're gonna take the color actually here and place it into the base color like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, search, and we're gonna type in color. I'm gonna get a color ramp and place it over here. And then we're gonna drag this value slider over here, and we're gonna make it kind of like a brownish, muddy color like this. We don't want it too dark, not too light. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to drag it in a little bit, about the same amount, and we're going to make that kind of like a creamish kind of color. And then to really give this some detail, we're going to come here to the scale, we're going to make it 12. And then we're going to come here to the detail, and we're going to make that 5. And then really importantly, we're going to drag the roughness all the way up to 1. And already, just with such a basic setup here, you can see it's already looking pretty good. And for, for now, I'm actually just going to limit the render just to a smaller section by going Control B. Um, that's just optional, that's just what I prefer to do. But we can make this look even better, more and more realistic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, search, get a color ramp node again. Whoops, a color ramp, there we go. We're gonna plug the color here into the factor, and then we're gonna plug this into our roughness. We're then gonna take this value over here, just drag it up, this little slider. Let's make the value a little bit less, kind of like a gray, and let's drag this one down like so, and we're gonna make it just a little bit less white. There we go, bring that value down. Now the reflection here is looking a bit better, but let's go Shift A and search, let's get a bump node, place it over here, and then take this color output, plug it into the height, and then plug this bump into the normal of the principled, and then come to the strength and make it 0.1. And now you can really see that this is starting to look quite cool. Um, now we have the sort of reflectivity and bump. Uh, we can come over here and you can dial it in. If you want it to be a little bit less reflective, just make this value here lighter. So I'm gonna maybe do that. I don't want it too reflective. Might drag this white value in a bit. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. But we can make this look even better, give it a little bit more depth. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go over here, we're gonna go Shift A, Search, and we're gonna type in Geometry. We're gonna get a Geometry node. And then let's plug the pointiness into the surface here. Now if we go Shift A and we go Search and we type in color, we can get a color ramp. And now we can fine tune the pointiness values here. And you can see because this is a high resolution object, you can really see here if we dial these in, we can kind of capture all of these um, areas that it's more um, pointy. So this is gonna be different depending on your model and how sharp things are. But I'm gonna go with something like this and really just get those values closer. So I get some of these kind of like um, 
occluded or I should say um, sharp areas, like the sharp pointy areas. And then we're going to use this as a map. So I'm going to move these two nodes up. And over here next to the principal, we're going to go Shift A, search, and let's go for a mix shader. Get a mix shader. And let's plug in this bottom, this one here to the top socket. And let's take this principal shader here and go Shift D, move it over here. Plug this duplication into the bottom socket. And let's make this color here kind of like a brownish dark brownish kind of color like this. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into the surface and then we can use this color output from the geometry and plug that into the factor of the mix shader. And now it's going to be using that as a map. And this makes quite a difference. Let's see if we can actually um, dial this back a little bit. And what it's giving us now in the areas where it's darker, it's kind of, or where it's more pointy, it's kind of giving us a little bit more um, of a darker kind of material. And that just looks a lot better. It really gives a lot more depth to this. So let's just quickly give this a test render and see what it looks like. And here we have it. We now have a nice looking um, sort of bone material that you could put on a skeleton or an animal frame, whatever you're working on. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, what I might actually do is also just select my um, background object if you have one. I think it just sometimes looks nicer just to make it a bit darker as well. And then it just gives it some nice contrast. And here you can see that looks a lot nicer now with that sort of like contrast there. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial and I hope you have enjoyed making this.